It's Wednesday, September 4th, 2013. Thanks for tuning in. This is the 404 Show. Coming to you from CNET, New York. I'm Jeff Bacalar. I'm Justin Yu. I'm Ariel Nunez. What's up, everybody? Hope your uh, shortened week is going well. And if you're uh, if you're you're a part of the tribe, a happy new year to you. That's what Rosh Hashanah is, Justin. Yeah, I know the celebration of lights. I mean, <laughs> New Year's. That's what it is. Awesome. So to celebrate, I will be doing my best impression of a Jew guy, mm-hmm. and I won't be here tomorrow, so I can, you know, eat the apples and honey. Right. And, oh, right. And kiss babies' foreheads. No unleavened bread. No, that's... Is that a Rosh Hashanah? Thing? Nope, that is uh, Passover. Oh, okay, sorry about that's that. That's when we, my my people can't eat any yeah. bread of any kind. So bring on nor, the bread. <laughs> nor have fun. Yeah. So uh, that's the story. So I'm not going to be here tomorrow, and Justin won't be here Friday. This is our last show together of the week. Yeah, let's make it a good one. Let's. They're always good when we're together. Absolutely. So so we, so we that's just a little programming <laughs> I note. Saw that. What? Did you get that? What happened? Did you that? get that? Yeah. What, what, what did I miss? <laughs> no, don't you a little worry your face about it. Okay. Yeah. I, sh- I shan't. I rolled my eyes a little. Oh, okay. That's real nice because you're a friend and, a, and a co-host and a, and a guy I want to really work with on a daily basis. <laughs> So the 404 UN is rolling on levels I've never seen before. Yeah, this is so every cool. Sta- almost every state represented. Denmark, Finland, Japan, Barbados, Pakistan, Syria, Costa Rica, India, Brazil, Jeez. all added in just 24 hours. Multiple entries from said countries. Mm-hmm. Thank you to everyone. And thank you for just volunteering for something that we really didn't get into too heavy a detail about. Right. Like, they don't know what they're 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 getting themselves into they don't know what they're volunteering for and that's why i love it i love it mm-hmm. yeah so it's cool. thanks it's a small world on the 404 we yeah. also got a really cool un logo we do it's the official made for us officially by the austrian rep his name is gregor yes right check this out it's the exact same shade as the regular united nations blue oh, wow. as is tradition incredible it's got like the floor around our logo I want a t-shirt with this yeah, on. Then I would love it. That would be sick. Or a flag. Why wouldn't we just get a flag? Yeah. We're going to fly that freak flag proudly. There's so, I mean, now that we've gathered all these names, we have to have something physical. And you're right. You know, before I was suggesting a Google Maps with, you know, a bunch of pins on it. But at this point, it would just be saturated with pins. We need an actual map. Where can we get one of those things? I don't know, from? but um, we've like a had... school supply. Like, I can add how many names we've added to the list, and it's like 375 people. Yeah, I don't know how wow. we're going to do this. It's... I, if you guys have ideas, send it to us, the 404 at CNET.com. Yeah, now that we've done this... Yeah, what do we do with it? No, mm-hmm. I know what we're doing with it. We're doing with it. Oh, we just got Maine, too. Nice. Maine wow. was one of the states we had not heard from anyone. Now, we've got everyone now. The only ones we don't have is Delaware, because you know, no one lives in Delaware. Mm-hmm. Maine... Yeah. Montana. I mean, one out of those 12 people have to listen to 404. North Dakota. Yeah. West Virginia and Wyoming. And that's it. Yeah. Wow. It's amazing. And we'll have the whole world covered by the end of the week. That's it. You know what? And what's funny is our international UN delegates mirror the U.S. one pretty much. What do you like, mean? In terms of numbers. Oh, right, right. Okay. It's, it's amazing. So who do we need still? From states? Uh, anywhere. Oh, well, have you... the, I mean, from the planet, you yeah. just got to just keep putting it in. Okay. I mean, you know, we, I'm sure there's a lot of European ones. I don't think we have anyone from we... Belgium. We don't have anyone from, like, Netherlands. But I, I know we know 404 listeners from there. Why don't you start a Google Doc where everyone can access it, yeah. and they can just write in their own country and maybe I'll just have a suggestion. Yeah, that might get a little out of control. Maybe, uh, and, and I also don't want to put people's full names in there. Well, it's up to them to put yeah. their names in. All right, we'll, we'll think about it. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's get to, uh, we, later in the show, we have a couple emails, and we do have a, a nice, healthy lot of voicemails as well. Cool. So well, let's get to the stories we'll see before. see if we can get to that. All yeah. right, what do we got first here? Uh, well, you wanted to talk about this uh, incredible story. It's kind of sad, and it makes me feel lonely. Yeah. But you wanted to talk about it, so let's get depressed. Well, it's not depressing <laughs> at all. It's just a really, uh, it's a very acute and logical examination of what the American social condition has evolved to. Right. This is from Nick Bilton in the Bits section of the New York Times. Posted this on September 1st. It's called Disruptions, colon, more connected yet more alone. And this plays right into a conversation I had with my parents over the weekend. Mm -hmm. My parents, are they're just kind of pissed at, like, the world. They don't like the fact that, you know, they think because we're so connected Mm -hmm. in technology, Mm -hmm. no one has any social skills anymore. That's true. Which is not 
untrue. It, right. It's there's there's some there's some value there. Mm-hmm. I find myself defending it just because I feel like some of that comes from maybe some of the unknown, mm-hmm. but they're coming from a, a good place. Right. And this article talks about how uh, the guy Nick who wrote this said he was watching a. Um, a video called I Forgot My Phone. Right, yeah, I saw that. And the video is just, it's a parody of what happens when someone forgets their phone and all of the tragedy that afflicts them on a, on a, on a normal day because well, it, they forgot their phone. It's also about her just not having a phone, so she realizes how many times she would have brought it out during the day. Like, right. she goes on a run and people are taking photos, then it's her birthday, and she's the only one without a phone at a concert and all these different events where people bring out their devices. Right. And it, it's sort of showing how alone you can feel if you're not included in that group. It's a commentary on how much of checking in and looking at your phone and being disconnected from the world in front of you has really interfered with the day-to-day social activity that now seems to be completely compromised and doesn't and is a shell of what it used to be. Yeah. This paragraph says it all. People make dinner reservations on open table, then they check in on Foursquare when they arrive at the restaurant. They take a picture of their food to share on Instagram. They post a, jo- a Twitter joke they heard during the meal, mm. review the restaurant on Yelp, then finally coordinate a ride home using Uber. Right. So it just is too much, right? Well, we now, now what I really I enjoy sort of shutting it off when you go to the bar, when you go yeah. to like I make that decision to really limit the amount of time that I'm looking at my phone when I'm either at a bar with friends, mm-hmm. engaged in conversation, or if I'm at a nice dinner. Yeah. I'm, I've been making that effort to not, you know, if I want to take a photo of food, okay, well, that's mm-hmm. something I'm going to do real quick and then be done with it. Yeah. I think, because, like, dinner time, I don't know, there's something about dinner. It's like this sacred thing, and especially mm. when you're out with friends and you're, like, enjoying yourself. You go out to dinner so you can socialize and talk not just be yeah. there for you know sacks of flesh checking of an electronic div- mm-hmm. gizmo in your in your freaking pocket every five seconds, and you know the the example that my parents gave me they're like we go out to dinner and we look across and we see a newly married couple and all mm-hmm. they're doing is sitting on their phones not right. even talking to each other and I and I'm and I'm you know I I I empathize with that. I think, I think it's absurd to, yeah. to, to act that way. I think there's a lot of reasons why people will bring out their phone in public, right? A lot, I think a lot of times it's just to fight that instant feeling of boredom, right? If you're, if you're bored for a second and you're waiting in line for a bathroom at a restaurant, then yeah, you're going to pull out your phone. But I think the other reason that people you know, use their phone is for the camera, right? And that's, I feel like, my theory is that it's a fear of being forgotten. It's a fear of being forgotten that's and what feeling it is? lonely, right? And then also proving to other people that you're not lonely by broadcasting that's what I think your it is. events. I don't think it's a fear of being forgotten. But I, I, I think, well, okay, so for me, I have a terrible memory. And I, I want to remember everything that happens in my life. I want to document it all. And I think everyone's become their own personal biographer, right. their own documentarian. right? So I can look back at every single event that I've done in the past six months and sort of be nostalgic about something that maybe happened last night. But something like that's really important to me because, one, I have a bad memory, and then, two, it's a fear of, you know, once you forget about things that you've done, does it still happen? You know what I mean? That's that's sort of the question. <laughs> if you if it's not documented, yeah. did it ever happen? Did it ever happen? Yeah. And, and sometimes going back through your photos, which I think is something people rarely actually do. Well, the same right? thing when you have a library of fifteen hundred photos. Right. How often do you scroll back to five years ago? It doesn't really happen like that. It, the same sort of thing was being said when personal camcorders first started becoming yeah. popular in the eighties. Yeah, like every time I go home and I visit my father, he always brings out this tiny shoebox of yeah. photos, right. right? Physical photos from when he was a kid and this spans his entire life right it's like uh you know 50 60 years of events that have happened to him but there's only i don't know 30 photos that span this entire time and it was really easy for us to just go through them it's like oh this is uh, the girlfriend i had before i met your mom and this is the day that you were born and they were these like very pinnacle events but i'm trying to think about you know now that you can take a photo of your kid every second of the day how are you going to go through that stuff with them anymore? Yeah. You're going to have to be like, well, here's the computer that I had when you were five years old. Let's go through this. You know well, what I mean? It's, well, n- it's not going to be as easy as it was before. Well, that's that's where I think something like Instagram is good for because you just pick the best of the best. Right, you know, right. To, things that you really do want to remember. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's your personal diary. That's right. how I use it, too. You know? I think it's yeah. fine. And I think I think you bring up a good point with, like, the personal di- diary sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um to what you said really got me thinking too. Like, think about the the kids who were born in the last ten years. Mm-hmm. 
like I don't really know what my dad or mo- mom really looked like as they were growing up. Like we don't really mm-hmm. know. Yeah, there's photographs there, and if you really wanted, you could sort of, you know, arrange them in chronological order and yeah. get an idea. But there's like ten but, photos, and like one of them's got a, a terrible watermark, like on film it. grain yeah, on it, right. and one of them's in black and white, and one's destroyed. Mm-hmm. But now, I feel like like the amount of photos that are taken of you. Yeah, like if there was a way to somehow measure that, like a uh, someone born in the '80s or '70s. Mm-hmm. That number has probably been multiplied by 40 mm-hmm. for someone who's born from, from you know, 1995 on. Mm-hmm. So just imagine how much more documentation there is of that person. Right. Like, I feel like, you know, my grandkid will have such a better idea of who I was. And, yeah. and think about all the video. Mm-hmm. Think about, like, you will know your ancestors from mm-hmm. here on out forever to a T. Yeah, you'll, you'll know, know what know their th- voice is. You'll know exactly like. what they sounded like. You'll know their manu- mannerisms. You'll know their attitude. You'll mm-hmm. know their personality. You'll know every last detail of them because the amount of, of, it. of documented footage of each person right. is now so gigantic. Well, not only their personal stuff, but what they're into. Exactly. At certain parts of their life. Like, what did they like when they were 13 and how that changed now that they're 40 right you can go back and look at that very easily just on a facebook timeline yeah like my like my grandfather mm-hmm. di- my uh the, he died in 94 i was 12 i knew him but i didn't know him as an adult yeah. as myself an adult and if i were able to have that sort of uh you know back catalog of footage on him and mm-hmm. to really understand the type of person he was that i would be a lot a lot more grateful yeah, I, I, that's what I think. It goes back to this idea of a fear of like obsolescence, right? Like when when you die, you want to leave behind a legacy so that you're not forgotten. And now I think this is sort of like this philosophical way of going about doing it, maybe subconsciously, but nevertheless, there's still going to be this history yeah. for you, and that's something that stays around hopefully but for that's a long cool. time. That's I think is that's cool? cool. I think that's cool. The personal sort of you know archive that each and every one of us has now. Yeah. What's not cool is. The, the complete sort of, like, you know, taking it to this insane mm-hmm. and almost, you know, mentally disabled sort of way. Like, we yeah. really have become complete ro- robots. Yeah, right? robots, totally. We're just, we're <laughs> out of our minds, man. We're, I, we're out of our freaking minds. I right think your, what your parents said is, they hit it right on the head. You know, th- what they said is true. We've been sacrificed. We've sacrificed our comfort for connectivity, mm. right? And I think it's just people that are fear of being awkward and feeling that awkwardness, right? That's the worst feeling in the world is feeling out of place, mm. left out and awkward. And being on your phone lets you get rid of all of that. And it's something that I think is really helpful for people like introverts, for example, that just want to escape and they can do that through their phone. If you don't have to feel awkward again, it's sort of a way to not feel lonely ever again. I bet if, if, you, if you're, if you're some, one of these people that does that, that you, you go out and, you, and all you're doing mm-hmm. is just you're attached to your phone. And all like people like that, like don't get me wrong, like even in Aruba. Yeah, I had my phone on me while I was in Aruba right. and because we had Wi-Fi pretty much wherever we went. But you, 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 it come, there comes a time where you have to like understand your problem. Yeah. It's, you can turn anything into freaking cocaine. You can turn anything into a drug. Right. And that constant checking of the phone, to me, is an addiction. I also think that there's not necessarily something bad about an awkward in-person interaction. Sure. Right? And that's what people are so afraid of. But when you talk to somebody, you make eye contact. You could see the facial features on their face, you know, that, that tell a much bigger story. There's also, and you can get interpretations that right, you're, right. you're never going to get on text message. <laughs> but those silences, yeah. sometimes those silences are good because then it makes you sort of deep, like, you know, makes you dive into your thoughts a little bit more. And it's not necessarily a bad thing to just sit there in silence. Of course. Think. I also think there's, uh, yeah, the world is kind of cool looking. Yeah. It's pretty rad. Just look around. I also think the blurring of, like, work and play mm-hmm. has uh, a bunch of negative side effects. Yeah. We, we, there's really no separation of the two for a lot of people. Yeah. And because of that, you know, so you're, you're waiting for your friend, right, to get to the bar, and mm-hmm. you start looking at your phone. Well, your work email's right there, and you're looking at your work email. Then something happens on yeah. Instagram. Then something happens on Twitter. And before you know it, you're just completely 30 minutes in the future. Mm-hmm. Things have happened that have passed you by, right. and all you did was like four photos on Instagram. <laughs> right. And that's all you have to show for it. Mm-hmm. Right? But, you know, your digital self, you, you were talking about your archive. Mm-hmm. The, the, your digital self that you put online... 
that's not really you, right? Because yeah, just the real life is unedited. Right. Real life, you can't crop photos and you can't, you know, edit out certain parts of your video where you're stumbling over your words. Mm -hmm. You know, I think there's something really beautiful about that, that live in-person interaction. For sure. And that's, that's really who you are, you know, like the, the way that you stumble and whatever. That's, that's sort of like your true self. To bring back to this uh, opinion piece real quick, which is really an awesome quick read and everyone listening should take a second to check it out. We'll link to it in the show notes. Nick Bolton says that, Bilton rather, says that smartphones might be having their TV in the kitchen moment. Okay. So if you, I'm sure a lot of our listenership would not remember, but the whole like TV, bringing the TV to the dinner table, mm -hmm. it was like a really big faux pas in the in the late 50s, right? When like TV started to move into the kitchen, it was like, oh, what well, we can't interrupt family dinner time. Yeah, I this that. is a sacred meal that has some sort of like you know. Uh, holiness to it. Yeah, you wouldn't even way. pick up a telephone, right? For when sure. It's during dinner, the, uh, what he's suggesting is that perhaps the same thing's happening with cell phones. Mm -hmm. And he brings up a really good point. Of course, we're changing as a society, but the iPhone's only really six years old, right? Mm -hmm. We're still in a transitive sort of mo time, right? Uh, those changes aren't set in place yet. So the oversharing and the over sort of use of your phone, and maybe maybe there's a light at the end of this tunnel. Maybe. We're not going to be as obsessed. Maybe it will become chic and trendy to not use your phone at a restaurant. I embrace a restaurant that says no, you know, uh, overusing of your phone. Mm -hmm. There's restaurants now that don't let you use your phone. If you do, yeah. you have to get up and leave. I think I want to be a part of that society. Mm -hmm. I'm not really with that, man. No? No. I mean, I think... I don't think it's anyone's place to tell someone else how to use their phone. That's fine. You know, like, there could be a couple that's sitting there both on their phone. Mm. Maybe they're completely happy doing that, sure. man, and that's how they get along. Sure. But, you know, everyone's different. If, I agree with you. you know? But I also think that if you're, a, if you're a restaurant owner and you want to create that kind of image, mm -hmm. you certainly have the right to say, yeah, all right, that's, that's, that's the kind of restaurant yeah, I want to run. Those people won't they go just there. won't go to your yeah. restaurant. Same, the same thing happened with, like, smoking. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, no, I, I mean, I sort of see both of your guys' points. Of if course. it's going to be distracting to other customers in the restaurant, then, right. yeah, don't have it because it's a small— Like, for example, Nick Bilton talks about Momofuku. Um, which is a tiny little ramen bar in the East Village. And right. Yeah, if you're going to use your phone, it's a darker atmosphere. You could see that light sure. on someone's it's face. distracting, yeah. Which is annoying. Um, or if you're at a concert, also very annoying. But if it's a bigger restaurant, if you're an IHOP or Olive Garden, oh, come on. then yeah, let them use their well, cell you've phones. already got plenty of problems. Right, yeah. That, with the, that's at least your worries. Yeah, those point. problems go without saying. But, but I'm saying I'm, if but, it's not disrupting anyone's sure. experience, and that's fine. do it. But what I'm talking about more, the, the bigger picture here, is a world where like that would be culturally awkward you know right. what i'm saying mm -hmm. we're like we move beyond that mm -hmm. where people don't have that need to do that yeah. Yeah. so maybe that's where we'll go he brings that that point about the iphone only being six years old is mm -hmm. brilliant because time has sort of slowed down with that in terms of like how we think about our lives with smartphones right time sort of slowed down even though the technology advances by leaps and bounds every year mm -hmm. that sort of bubble that we've been inside of the smartphone bubble yeah that's sort of slowed down time a bit it's only been six years that's nothing yeah i agree so we'll see what happens you know what else i wanted to bring up too is as i was reading this article i thought i was thinking about youtube videos and have you guys ever just binge watched a bunch of, of youtube videos on reddit you just go down the rabbit hole yeah, you, yeah. when you go on, down that rabbit hole it's sort of this terrible feeling, and I'm, I did this yesterday, and I kind of snapped out of it after half an hour of watching 30-second <laughs> like, YouTube clips. You get up, you're like, what year is it? Yeah, <laughs> and you know what? I would almost argue that it's sort of stopping people from learning how to feel real emotions, right? Because when you see these YouTube clips, like yesterday, for example, I watched like a puppy playing around with other dogs, mm -hmm. which was so cute. And I was like, oh, that's so, that's so adorable. This was 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Then 30 seconds later, I was getting pissed because I was watching a video of stop and frisk. Right. You know, mm -hmm. like a police uh, officers with a hidden camera that were bullying innocent people. And that pissed me off. That was only a minute. And then I watched like this dancing video. And it's, it was all these artificial emotions that I felt in a tiny amount of time. Right. That can't be healthy. You know, well, like it's sort of inspiring ourselves to feel when we're stuck at work. And right. maybe the symptom is that we shouldn't be in, inside of a cubicle in front of a computer all day. All right, Peter Gibbons. You know what I mean? Like maybe it's, it's not that. Maybe we just shouldn't be around technology all the time. Yeah. It's sort I, of more I just, of a symptom of, of a larger issue, I know. There's a lot of, like, social negative effects. My, my whole thing is, like, I just hope that this somehow eliminates, like, you know, brain decay. 
yeah moving down the road you know what i mean like i just hope this promotes like healthy brain activity because there's so much stimuli yeah yeah that's the only thing i can really be we could as a society can maybe get excited about but like look because you're so crazy and yeah. oc- preoccupied with your technology, mm-hmm. you're not. No one's gonna get Alzheimer's anymore. Right. So hopefully, hopefully that's right. the only thing we could, you know, have a positive takeaway with. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going in that direction. You know, like this is what I was sort of talking about before with stuff like Pebble and wearable technology, right? With the Google Glass coming out, Pebble, mm-hmm. you're basically strapping these web services to your body. Right. Yeah. Like, why would you want to do that? I hate Twitter for notifications already. Right. AP notifications are mostly useless. Why do I want something on my body that will physically make So don't a get it. Don't get it. But that's what I'm saying. We're, that's the direction that we're headed into. And those are only two products, but they're huge. I'm wondering where we're going to be at in 10 years, you know? Are we going to have a chip embedded in our system? And yeah. what's to stop people from wanting to well, do that? Well, it's all voluntarily, though, man. It's all yeah. what you want to do. I right. keep my phone me. on silent, yeah. you know? So I only look at my phone when I want to. Yeah. You all know right what on. I mean? Like, if I don't, any text messages, phone calls, alerts, I mm-hmm. don't hear. It's if I'm busy, time. I'm just not looking at it, you know? So I just think it, it's all on the user, you know, and how you want to use it. Yeah. You know, how you end up using it, you right. know what I'm saying? But Man. we still have to interact with the people that use it in the wrong ways. That's what scares yeah. me. But is it the wrong ways? Uh, if they're not it's making not wrong. eye contact Nothing's right when you're wrong. talking to them. Y- yeah, yeah. But that's, there's, that's but there's polite and impolite. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Right. And there's that. For sure. So we'll see. I really like what this guy has to say. I, w- I wonder if we could talk to him. But anyway, it sounds like he's in San Francisco. But um, yeah, read this for sure. We'll post that in the show notes. Oh, I'm so lonely. No, you're not. <laughs> I saw this video. Did you see that video about loneliness? That was sort of like a video infographic talking about statistics of loneliness. No, the, I've, the, I've actually been able to cut the cord, Justin. The most jarring thing. <laughs> well, we can't go to all go to Aruba, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> um, the most jarring thing about that video is at the end, he says, if we can't be alone, we'll only know how to be lonely. And Aww. that is probably the saddest, bleakest thing. The saddest feel ever. Yeah. Hey, man. But I, then I just watched some puppy videos. Anyway. Right. I was going to say, the, you know, that's the beauty of it, <laughs> though. Okay. And then you felt, and you just felt the, a need to numb the pain. Yeah. That's really what Reddit is, too, is just reading other people's stories. It's, dr- it's a drug. That's, that's what's kind of scary to me is I love Reddit. I'm on it every I take, single day. I take day. Reddit. You take Reddit yeah. four times a day. But it's just listening to other people's stories when you could be talking to people in real life. Hey man, you gotta you gotta everything in moderation. Yeah. You gotta you gotta know when to turn it off. Yeah. You gotta know when to flush and you gotta know when to turn it off. There's Two no rules of life either. Like we couldn't think of that Ben Stiller movie before the show and you just pulled it up in five seconds. Mm-hmm. That could have been a twenty minute conversation about how much we love Ben Stiller and you just cut it off. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's uh it's it's I don't know. Do you not look up something when to settle a bet? I always do that. You have to. But there's value in the discussion that happens before I'm with you look you. it up too. That's the that's the fun part, seeing how long you can go. Right. That's where the fun comes in. Yeah. Don't worry, your brain still works. As yeah. much as you've uh completely tainted it with the overexposure to information, mm-hmm. it still works. Still do you right. Yeah. Oh, well I'm bummed now. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, this next story I want to talk about actually ties into um, this last conversation. Um, so there's this 27-year-old father of two. This is great. He sort of had the same frustrations as us, right? He's a young father. He's, uh, he's 27 years old, but he's got two kids. And uh, recently, one of his kids uh, denied his uh, request to go outside and play. And he just wanted to go out and play a game of baseball and play some sports outside with his kid. His kid refused and decided to play on the iPad instead. And so after that happened, he got super frustrated, and he decided to ban all technology from the house that was manufactured past the year 1986. Oh, my God. His birth year, right? So it's kind of cool. They've sort of locked themselves in this time capsule, and they're pretending it's the year 1986. Yeah, they're just sending faxes 24-7, I guess. They didn't even have those in 1986. Yes, they did. Carrier pigeons. (laughs) Um, So it's sort of like the same idea as what we were talking about, but they're doing this experiment for a year. Right. Right? Um, So the plan is to live like it's 1986 until April 2014. Their parents will only use the computer at work. That's quite the jump. No iPads, no iPhones. But they're going to magically go from 1986 to 2014? That's in, a huge... In a year. That's a huge leap. Yeah. You yeah, know? It'll be like 10 iPhones out by that I was going to say, they're not Marty <laughs> McFly right here. That's a huge, gigantic leap. Yeah. Dangerous. But I think it's a great experiment because, I don't know, I mean, a lot, we had a lot of great family conversations over the dinner sure, table. Sure, sure. Right? No, and, I mean, it's 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 good. Like, uh, you know, I, I think people need to, like, really learn to... Not, to 
to take the TV out of the the kitchen. Yeah. And to like really just have to look at each other's ugly faces. Right. You know, and actually talk about something. How was your day? Even if it's Miley freaking Cyrus, at least you're talking about something. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know what's interesting is this guy says that he's even though it's only been a month. He's already been experiencing phantom cell phone vibrations. Oh, yeah. That In other words, yeah. he oh, thinks wow. that he's received a text message or a phone call sure. because he thought his phone vibrated in his pocket. He takes it out. It's empty. Yeah. Why he has it in his pocket, I don't know. That's it's already just, cheating. It's just like a Tic Tac box in yeah. his pocket. Yeah. <laughs> if you're living in the year 1986, you can't have this hunk of metal no. in your pocket. No, 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 Take that out and destroy it. The cell phones then didn't fit in your pocket. No. They fit in the trunk of your car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Phantom vibration, dude. Scary, right? That's crazy. That's why. It's like losing a limb. Yeah, Yeah, right? Oh, my (laughs) God. You've heard of that, right? Yeah, the phantom limbs. That freaks me out, man. Amputees who, like, feel their limbs. Oh, Mm -hmm. they, like, try to pick stuff up? No! I just feel like, 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 if you lose a leg, you feel like your foot's itchy or something like that. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Creepy. That is scary. It kind of makes sense. nerve Your brain, you know, your brain does whatever it wants, feels whatever it wants to feel. Yeah. Do you guys think that this, uh, this experiment's a little bit extreme yeah you think they little, could just monitor their kids sure. video games and cell phone use? right i mean well first off this canadian family stuck in 1986 has access to nes because right. that was in 84 mm-hmm. right so that's and just because your kid says no to you when right. you want to go outside doesn't mean that's his final word yeah. you can also make him go because <laughs> right you're an adult because guess what you yeah, brought exactly. him into this world yeah and you can bring him out and it's probably not his ipad it's probably your ipad so take it away <laughs> yeah just make them go get jobs or something yeah I don't know. Uh, it's 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 certainly it's 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 story worthy and it's a good conversation topic. Yeah. But in reality, it's pretty silly. Yeah. A bit extreme. A little a little extreme. A little yeah. crazy. Mm-hmm. But these man, poor kids are probably getting made fun of so hard. Dude. I just hope they got <laughs> all the music from '86, man. Ooh, that'd oh, yeah. be cool. That's all I'm curious about. <laughs> yeah. You know, I hope they're rocking that just as hard. Yeah. Give me some like Duran Duran, maybe. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'll listen to whatever 86 But just tapes, offer. though. You can only listen to tapes. Only yeah. cassettes, Final. baby. That's yeah. it. Oh, those kids are going to get beaten up. <laughs> it's fun, so man. Hard. That's it. I wonder how it's going to affect their social life. That doesn't happen in Canada. Canada's too freaking cool to bully each other. Oh, that's true. All right? All they do is, like, play hockey and eat coffee yeah. and donuts. Mm-hmm. All right. And poutine. And Can't poutine. forget about poutine. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. Uh, all right. Maybe we have time for, like, one or two more, and then we'll get to a couple voicemails and emails. Okay. Um, let's let's talk about something that would never, ever happen in the United States. And if we have time, we'll talk about something that hopefully will come to the United States. Let's start with the one that will never. Uh, this is really interesting. It's a new Japanese Facebook group that came out over the weekend. And, you know, Facebook groups happen for all kinds of things, like group bike rides and camping trips and family and things like that. This one is a little different. It's a Facebook group of real-life superheroes. That's right. Like, just like Kick-Ass. Except, unlike Kick-Ass, what these guys do is they fight dirty toilets. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> this is evil toilets. This is nice. Interesting. They're called the Cleaner Soldiers, and that's a direct translation of the, uh, the Japanese title that they use. What they do, this is really weird, they patrol the streets, right, together. With, like, plungers and shit? Yeah. yeah, and they look for filth, grime, and dirt on public toilets. And what they do, even in the freezing wintertime, this is all year round. They do it every single weekend. They go around, they find public toilets that are dirty, and they clean them for free, just out of the goodness of their heart. That's got, really cool, right? They got 35 members. Yeah, they got 35 members. They meet on Sunday mornings at 6 a.m. all year round. And this is probably the grossest part. They refuse to wear gloves when they wash. Why? Yeah, these, these, people are, these people are like mentally disabled. <laughs> yeah. Well, the philosophy is that a clean toilet is a clean spirit, right? So that's why they use their bare hands to clean this <laughs> stuff. And it's just straight from uh, philanthropic spirit. That's all. That's the only reason why they do it is because they know that when people use toilets, they get dirty. No one likes using dirty toilets. Clean them up. They sound like a bunch of mentally disabled janitors. Yeah. Is what they sound like. It sounds like it. There's no there's no shame in throwing on those latex gloves. Let's no. maybe keep it safe. Yeah. I don't know. Just an idea. For had. them. For yeah. them. But who knows? You know, a, a lot of these toilets are... Have you seen a Japanese toilet before? They have all kinds of switches and bidets built into them. Like $3,000 toilets. You've seen these luxury ones? Yeah. Like the Toyo ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Those ones... Probably pretty difficult to clean. A lot of nooks and crannies in there. Yeah, that's why they all bring their own personal toothbrushes. That's right. To all of their Sunday morning meetings <laughs> to attack grime. Yeah, I like this. I don't. 
And <laughs> think about it. I mean, I do not. Have you guys ever been to Japan before? I haven't. No, Never. I want to go. Me too. But yeah, apparently the summer heat can reach over 30 degrees Celsius over there. That's hot. Just like 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, that's hot. So, and with high humidity, you know, there's a lot of bacteria running around in those toilets. They need to be cleaned. Cool. Totally gross, Justin. What else you got? They're not going <laughs> to clean themselves. Nope. I saw another video in my YouTube binging yesterday of this real life Power Ranger in Japan. This is a similar thing. He doesn't clean toilets. He actually stands outside of subway stations that have long underground stairwells. Mm -hmm. And he just helps pregnant women, well, people with nice. groceries, that's and nice. old people walk down the stairs. In a Power Ranger uniform? In a Power Ranger's <laughs> uniform. See, that's kind of counterproductive. Well, he said it, he scared a lot of people for the first sure. few months. But right. then after a while of doing it every day, they kind of warmed up to him. And can we get him? What that would sound like? Uh, we... you're like, hey, I'm a Power Ranger. Yeah, I'm from I Japan thought. right that's now. Right. Do you need help? You think he would say, I'm from Japan right now? Yeah, hey, I'm from Japan. <laughs> We're in Japan right now. Do you need help down the stairs? Right. Wow, right. I feel like I'm there. Wow, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, weird, Somehow, right? Somehow, through the magic of your voice, yeah, you're able up. to transport us halfway around the world. <laughs> I was able to buy Rosetta Stone from the online, from the, you know, the internet. Right. So nice. now I'm perfectly fluent in English. Yeah. Mm. By, by the way, I'm a power ranger. And I've nailed down the <laughs> accent. Yeah. And yeah. all the nuances of, of the English language. Well, I watch a lot of 404. Right. Sure. That's where you learn. Man, you suck. <laughs> uh, all right. That's it for those stories. Thank you, Justin. Yes. You, are, you truly are an amazing curator of useless knowledge. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. All right. We, uh, we've got some voicemails to get to. It's been quite a while, right? It certainly has. Let's do calls from the public time. Time to show the love. Go. 866-404-CNET. 404. All right, calls from the public time. We were surprised. I thought all of these were going to be, um, you know, people who wanted UN delegations. But mm -hmm. no, they weren't. They were just uh, people sort of commenting on all the shows we did last week, the week before. So let's get through as many as we possibly can Starting with a guy who loves, remember that book, Ready Player One? Yeah. Here's what he's got to say about that. Hey, 404 guys. This is Austin from Jeff. Jeff, first off, I'd like to thank you for recommending the book, Ready Player One. I was wondering if you guys could do a Christmas special on it. As a side note, Justin, I did listen to it on audiobook from the, that I rented from the library. Hmm. Okay, so he listened to the audio mm -hmm. version of Ready Player One. That he got from the library. That he got from the library. I love that. That's He's truly uh, a scavenger well extraordinaire. Yeah, maybe we'll do a, a Yuletide episode about Ready Player One. You haven't read it, right? No. All right, go read that. Have you read it? Nope. All right, do me a favor. I don't, you, you, you would like it. You're like 80s nerd culture. Yeah, yeah, could be yeah you would dig it. That. It's a super easy read. It took nothing, to, no time to okay. read it. Anyone who hasn't done it, go for it. Uh, all right, apparently you all love the Olive Garden segment yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everyone <laughs> thought it was funny to watch me squirm. And uh, this guy lets me have it. Hey, guys. It's New York from Justin. I listened to Thursday's show, and seeing Jeff's reaction to Justin's pilgrimage to Olive Garden was so priceless. But over the past few years of listening to your show, I've come to one realization. Yeah. Jeff, sorry, buddy, but you are just such a food snob. <laughs> oh, I yeah. Mean, yes. Dude, tell me something I don't Thank know. Thank you. Seeing your aversion to anything mass-produced or packaged <laughs> is entertaining for me. Yeah. But the moral of I'm the not, story I'm not unaware of it. is that unless something is handmade by yeah. some authentic ethnic family in the heart of an mm. ethnic neighborhood of New York City, you just snub your nose to it. Mm -hmm. But Justin, I go like this. his claims of just good enough food and affordable price mm. is pretty much what most middle-class Americans can afford these days. And right. That the, He's right. We have the middle-class of uh, Americans that, that don't finish know any better. E finish his email. Well, it goes on for Let another him. minute. Okay. So we, we're, but we, I think the point is taken. He is right. He's 100% right. What I, I feel like there's a word for people that Hip. only eat like artisanal. No, 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 no. Fancy I don't only eat artisanal. Things, and then they shun the mainstream just to shun it. Dickheads. Is it hipster? No. That's a total <laughs> definition of a hipster. You are a food hipster, man. First and of for all, all the shit you talk about, people that you assign that that word to. Yeah. It's kind of ironic that now it's being labeled as yourself. Uh, no, that's you doing it. I am you're, of you're the people. You're misnaming it. I am of the proletariat. It's a, first of all, a, Most they call people that don't foodies. have access to. They call that foodies. And I'm not a foodie either. Foodies are food hipsters. 
whatever it is, first of all, I just enjoy stuff that doesn't taste like crap. Forgive me. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, like food is important to me. I clearly eat a lot of it. Mm -hmm. But from an economical standpoint, you know, the best food isn't always the cheapest either. You're totally right. It's not. Yes. Yeah, so but sometimes for those it can who be. can't necessarily look, afford look, it. We can go down the list. You know, I what? used to be, mm-hmm. and I'll say it right now with no shame, mm-hmm. with no shame, I tell you. I used to love Red Lobster. Yeah. There you the have Cheddar it. Bay biscuits mm-hmm. are delicious. Give me 15 Cheddar Bay biscuits and yeah. I'm a happy little kid. You know what? Given the chance, if I'm in some severely inland state mm-hmm. that has no access to sea whatsoever, mm-hmm. I mean, Technically, Vegas should be that, but they just, like, helicopter salmon in there all the time. Right. I will go to a freaking Red Lobster. It's mm, good. Okay. Give me Red Lobster. Where's the butt coming into this There's no butt. <laughs> I would do it. I would go to Red Lobster. If you said, no, nah, I wouldn't go to one in New York just because I just, I don't want to be, I don't want to be in there. It's really just the pizza thing, I think, for you. <laughs> pizza's, but that's a no-brainer. Come on. You, pizza, dude, come on. Yeah. Pizza's f- pre- basically free in New York. You're like, um, one of the, you're like one of these people that if you ever say, like, oh, I love this donut, and you, you'd be like, Oh, if you love donuts, you have to go to this tiny little patisserie no. oh, in Florence, up. Italy. No. You have to get there <laughs> on like Sunday that. between 3 and 5 p.m. because that's when the guy comes. It's great. You have to go there. No. And I'm just like, hey, I'm just trying to eat this Dunkin' Donuts. Hey, man, right now. I'm just trying to eat this donut. Just relax. Why don't you buzz off? Yeah. That's no, you. That's not me. You're Wait, crazy. So, I just admitted I love Red Lobster, so all <laughs> points are moot. What's so up? So what exactly is wrong with Olive Garden? Yeah, what is wrong with Olive Garden? You weren't here for it that just, conversation. It just, no, it it just doesn't. Stand for anything positive. The thing yeah. is, your problem is it's people like going, that go it's to like crazy. Ita- like, would you go to Taco Bell in Mexico? Yeah, definitely not. Yeah, so yeah. that's my point. Right. But it's but it is it tastes horrible. No, you think it tastes horrible. It tastes I, really good. I've never been there. Uh, <laughs> it see, it I've tastes been there, really I've been good. There plenty of times. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Which is yeah. there's one in San Francisco in Daly City that yeah, I used they to don't, go to. But, that, but mm-hmm. there's but one in. If you had a choice of Italian food, you're obviously not going to go to Olive Garden in New York. But you're not. Depends how much money I got in my pocket. Exactly. That's exactly my point. But but even Olive Garden isn't the cheapest. No. Yeah. It's not the cheapest. Come on, you elitist freaking Olive Garden. But if you wanted never ending cost of all. It's true. If you wanted to go really cheap you would just buy the ingredients and make it yourself because that right. would be that and would i'm in favor of that tip. that i'm in favor but of that if you want to treat yourself to a meal and you don't want to have to cook it yourself this is the cheapest way to go anyway mm-hmm. they have great salad mm-hmm. and breadsticks while i would love to talk about <laughs> pathetic chain restaurant food <laughs> for the entire program mm-hmm. we simply can't we have to move on more we could talk about it more another time oh my god red lobster Lo- and uh, olive garden are owned by the same company great Unbelievable. I, I'm tell- I like Red Lobster. It's like the Avengers. I am unashamed. Uh-huh. I like it. What's the other chain I really like? Oh, uh, I used to really Outback li- Steakhouse. Oh, there you go. I used to go there all the time. Outback Steakhouse, great. No rules. Yeah. I used to go there <laughs> no all rules. the time. Yeah. There's yeah. no rules there. You yeah. walk in, you just like flip over tables. They're <laughs> yeah, like, oh, yeah. well, fine. No yeah. rules here. I mm-hmm. uh, love Outback. Don't go there anymore. Haven't been there in a couple years. Yeah. But... I got no problem Outback with that place. It's delicious. There's Outback one around great. the corner from the Olive Garden on 23rd See, that's, Street. I don't know if I can go to an Outback in Manhattan. That's like yeah. my, I can't go to, like, would you ever go to TGIF Fridays in Times Square? <laughs> yeah. Would you go? Would you be caught dead there? I wouldn't get Chinese yeah. food in Hoboken either, but you tried to get me to go over there. When? You said, like, there's a Chinese, great Chinese restaurant I did? in Hoboken. Yes. I can make up stories, too, you, you know. You said that. <laughs> You're full of crap. My point is that you don't always have to get it from the localized area it comes from. Yeah, I'm gonna go to, to I'm gonna good. go to Hong Kong and go to Panda Express. Panda That's Express is I'm good too. Do. I don't mind hating on Panda Express either. Yeah, look, you got me with Outback. You got me with Red Lobster. Be grateful. Troll right. level ten right now. Yeah, you're pretty bad. <laughs> you're pretty bad. Uh, we ran out of time for voicemails because that Olive Garden one. <laughs> we only got to go through two of them. So we'll hold these off for you. Can play them tomorrow if you'd like. Oh right, okay. Yeah, it's just me. Yeah, it's just you. Oof. It'd be all uh, food episode of me and Ariel. So wait, so uh, do you know who you're gonna have on tomorrow? Uh, I don't know. I really like when I liked it when Cheryl came in when you yeah. were here like two weekends right. two weeks ago. Funny. Okay, that's cool. Maybe Bridget. We'll see. All right, good it'll luck. be a surprise. Uh, great. Do that Friday. Uh, Chris Plant from the website Polygon.com. We'll be here. We'll have a lot of fun with him because a lot of news has come out mm. this week about games, like the fact that Xbox One's coming out November 22nd, officially. So uh, we'll have more on that, and we'll talk to Chris about games on Friday. Again, Happy New Year if you're doing that Jewish thing. Good for you. I love it. You're coming to our dinner tomorrow, right? Yeah, yeah, I'll see you there. You too, Ariel? Sure, Man, what one, is it? One year we got to do this. 
got to bring you guys to like Passover or something. I mean, you haven't really been selling it that well over the no. past few years. <laughs> You've been talking about it. You sound miserable. I'm not exactly. Time. I'm not exactly like the ambassador. Yeah. Right? For uh, for the but Jewish, the food is uh, better than yeah. Passover, right? Yeah, it's crazy. No, food's not better. Food's it's better not. than Rosh Hashanah. Oh, okay. Anyway, enjoy the holiday if you're celebrating. If not, tune in tomorrow with uh, Justin and Ariel. And then I'm back on Friday with Chris Plant from Polygon. That'll do it for us. We'll see you tomorrow. I'm Jeff Bacalar. I'm Justin Yu. I'm Ariel Nunez. This has been the 404 Show. High tech, low brow. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Until tomorrow.